everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Let's doodle something today, and let's use some alcohol ink while doing it. And rather than just making something that's just abstract, how about we make something that's recognizable as somewhat of a scene? For this project, we'll need some alcohol ink. I chose Jacquard Pinata, but use whatever inks make you happy. We'll need something with which to thin our inks. And ordinarily, I'd say isopropyl alcohol, but I know that it's tricky for some of you to find. Now, I've been told that some people are finding it by going to the pharmacy, going to the counter, and asking for it because sometimes they have some behind the counter. So try that. And if that doesn't work, another thing that you can use is Jacquard Pinata's cleanup solution. This is actually ethanol, and ethanol is just another form of alcohol. It's actually a little bit stronger in being able to clean up alcohol ink than isopropyl alcohol, so it thins the inks really well. So this is an option. You'll also need something to hold your inks while you paint. You'll need a couple of paint brushes, a pen with which to doodle, now, ordinarily, I love Faber-Castell's Pit Artist Pens or Sakura Pigma Microns, but for today, I'm going to be using Sakura's Microperm. And I will explain to you in a bit why, and you'll see the advantage of this particular pen. And then finally, we're going to need something on which to paint. And for that, I chose Duralar by Graphics. Now, ordinarily, I love gra the opaque white plastic by Graphics, but the advantage to Duralar is that it's translucent. And for this particular project, that's going to come in really handy. Let's take a quick look at Duralar in case you aren't familiar with it. There are a few versions of it, including a completely shiny and clear version, but the one that I love the best is the matte frosted version. It comes in a pad of 25 sheets that are 9 by 12 inches. And as you can see, the sheets are translucent. I've cut one sheet in half, so we'll be working on one of these resulting 6 by 9 inch pieces. One advantage of this translucent substrate is that you can see through it. And this allows you to trace the images you want to paint. Because of that, I get to sketch out what I want on a separate piece of paper. I can make all the mistakes I want on that sketch and then use the sketch as a template for the actual piece I want to make on the Duralar. Now, since I seem to love to draw rocks and pebbles, I'm sketching a pile of them and some underwater foliage. I seem to have an affinity for that, too. <laughs> I'm not going to sketch everything, just the main parts to give myself kind of like a preliminary layout of where I want things to go. And then once I'm happy with that, I pull out my inks and add just one drop each into different wells of my palette. For this particular piece, I chose coral, lime green, burrow brown, golden yellow, and Baja blue. Another wonderful aspect of Duralar is that it has tooth. And as a result, you can thin your inks quite a bit and still have them bind well to the surface. Since I want to doodle, and I want the doodle to be pretty obvious and visible, I don't want my inks to be too intense. And if you've worked with Pinata before, you know that Pinata straight out of the bottle is very intense and very saturated, but I'll still be able to thin them a lot and have them work really nicely on the Dorlar. Now, since like I know that a lot of people are struggling to find alcohol, I'm gonna do all of this with the cleanup solution. 
as my thinning agent so that you can see that it works very nicely for this. But if you have isopropyl alcohol, by all means, use that. I'm starting out with Baja Blue, just to put in a watery background for now. Again, my star is going to be the doodle, so I just want to put some color down. My goal isn't to stay within any lines, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. So if you want to really, really color within the lines, that is just fine. Paint this however you like. Next, I'm going to put down some color for my greenery. I don't care if it bleeds beyond the plan I drew. Again, I am letting it go beyond the lines because I can always adjust the plan if I want. Since this is only, the plan is really only on a piece of paper. So it doesn't matter if I change it up and adapt as necessary. And for a doodle, I also don't mind the coloring outside the lines look. I kind of like that for this type of thing. You see that I've put down more green than makes sense for what I've drawn so far, but and I've also added a little bit of yellow, more than the sketch requires. And that's because I know that I'm, I'll be adding uh, more plant life later. So I'm kind of setting the stage for that. Next up, some color for the rocks. I'm going with some brown, some coral, and occasionally a hint of yellow. And I mix the colors too. Now remember, these are rocks, so they really can be any color you like. And they really can look however you like too. I'm going to vary the intensity or the value of the colors so that there's a little bit of interest so they're not all the same exact shade and exactly the same color. Now, if you're working with inks that are thinned like this, and they're like with cleanup solution or uh, isopropyl alcohol, there will be quite a bit of blooming. So keep an eye on that and avoid loading your brush with too much ink so that your <laughs> rocks don't become boulders, <laughs> you know. Unless you're working with marabou inks. For some reason, they bloom a lot less and get away from you a lot less than most other inks. But since I'm using pinata, I have to be a little careful because it will bloom quite a bit. Okay, now that I have my color down, it's time to start doodling. Now, as I mentioned before, I chose this Sakura Microperm pen for a reason. Unlike Pigma Microns or Faber-Castell Pit Pens, microperms are alcohol-based, so they dry instantaneously, meaning there is no smudging, even when drawing on plastic like this Duralar, or craft plastic, or even glass or ceramic tile. So you could doodle on ceramic tile with a microperm. And as a lefty, <laughs> that's a bonus for me. And as someone who likes to doodle, and therefore I move all over the piece as I'm working, so I, I'm really grateful for not having to worry about smudging. And it's also wonderful not to have to worry about where I'm resting my hand. The microperm is similar to an ultra fine point Sharpie but with more precision. Now, if you're working on a larger scale piece or if you prefer thicker lines, Sharpies are actually fine to use, by the way. Now, if you're wondering, well then, why not just get these microperms and forget the other pens that are out there for doodling and drawing? Well, for me, that comes down to size. Uh, I tend to like super duper fine lines at times, 
And these microperms are available only in three sizes, as far as I know, while the others, like the Pigma Microns, the Faber Castells, they come in more options of sizes, uh, including finer ones, and they also come in different colors. So that's kind of why I kind of like having all of them. But sometimes a budget doesn't permit that, and honestly, my budget really shouldn't either. <laughs> but, you know, when you are just kind of locked up in your house, you kind of need to spoil yourself. And I kind of spoiled myself with a few pens, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Now, as you see, my first goal here is just to draw in the main lines from my sketch. And once they're in, I can start to embellish. This is where you really can have fun. Be as detailed or minimalistic as you like. You know, put in spirals or dots, wavy lines, whatever. I'm just literally making up plant and seaweed life now. Some that are kind of realistic and some that are fully fantastical. <laughs> Again, have fun with this. This is your underwater world, or maybe you're making an above ground scene. Go full on alien world if you like. I tend to <laughs> go that route a lot, so that I can get away with, you know, hey, I, this is a plant. I'm sure it exists on some planet somewhere. So, you know, have fun with this. And if you're struggling for ideas on what, how to draw things or how plants could sort of kind of look, Google some undersea pictures or plants for aquariums or just make up pretty patterns and turn those into a plant of some sort. I'm really just doodling away on the green blobs that I had put down as my background. Oh, and, and by the way, no one says your plants have to be green either, by the way. So you could just make them blue or orange or orange and blue. <laughs> have fun with this. We're doodling, remember. We're just doodling. Now let's add a little dimension to some of these elements. And we're going to do that with a centuries-old technique called stippling. Stippling is using dots of one color to create patterns or shapes um, to give something a sense of opacity or shading. You can create an entire drawing <laughs> by doing nothing but stippling but here we're going to use it just to give some things more of a 3D look. Now to make something look dark, what you do is you pack your dots closer together or you put in layers of dots in the same place. And to give things more of an airy look or a lighter look, you space your dots more widely apart. Here I'm using dots to suggest shading on this frond of seaweed. And with very little effort, it all of a sudden has more presence. Now what I think will really benefit from this technique are the rocks. So let's tackle those. Now I'm going to assume that the light source is coming from the right. So if that's the case, the left side of the rocks should appear darker. To that end, I'm concentrating lots of dots to the far left of each rock, and then I'm gradually decreasing the concentration of those dots as I move toward the right of each individual rock. So as I move toward the side that would be facing the light, I want less dots fewer dots. When stippling with this type of pen, be gentle with the nib or the point of the pen. Avoid pounding with it. Instead, use the lightest touch that you can. A good pen will deliver ink with hardly any pressure. Like, it should be, I mean, really, the lightest, lightest touch you can possibly give the paper or substrate. 
And if you're gentle, the nibs of your pens will not only last longer, but they'll stay nice and sharp longer too. Now, while I'm stippling, I'm also trying to suggest contours with the dots to make the rocks look roundish, but still have some bumps and protrusions. Like, I don't want them to look like, you know, smooth like eggs or something like that. And I'm doing that, I'm kind of giving those rocks those contours by clustering some dots into almost crooked or curved lines, just here or there. Periodically stop, look at your piece, and decide where you might need a few more dots to either emphasize a shadow or maybe put in some of those contours. And then, because I, <laughs> I don't know, I love drawing pebbles. It's like a sickness, I know. So I kind of have to do a few of those, too. I gotta make a couple pebbles here or there. <laughs> They're also a great way to hide boo-boos. So if you kind of messed up a little bit, make a pebble. <laughs> That's my solution to everything. Okay, I think this looks pretty good, yeah? Well, of course we could stop here, but you must know me better than that by now, right? <laughs> so let's add an occupant to our scene. To help with that, I go back to my original sketch and make up a simple doodly fish. So far, I've told you about two advantages of working on Dorlar. One, it's got tooth, so you can thin your inks quite a bit and still use them and not worry about them binding to the Dorlar. And the tooth means you can also use colored pencils on it, by the way. And two, because it's translucent, you can trace your images onto it quite easily, like I just did with my little doodle fish. But now, let's look at a third advantage. Also because of this wonderful translucency, you can paint color on the reverse that will show through to the front. I couldn't have painted the fish's color on top of the doodle that I just made because the alcohol ink would have basically wiped away my fish drawing because the marker is also alcohol ink, and so adding alcohol ink on top of it would have made it bleed and get mushy, and it would have been a mess. But doing it on the back side, I'm totally safe. By the way, for this fish, I'm using ink straight from the bottle, and I'm doing that to prevent out of control blooming. <laughs> and also to get a little more color since it will be a tad lighter when I flip the painting around. Something else that I can very safely do while I'm back here on the reverse is I can intensify or enhance any of my colors. I can add more blue to the water, which is what I'm doing now, and I can also add texture or movement, whatever I like. For fun, I pulled out a white Posca pen and gave the fish a few bubbles. <laughs> you can always use Posca pens for all sorts of embellishments too. So you can add little specks of color here and there. Tell me in the comments what you think of the bubbles. Were they worth adding? For the final touches, I chose to brighten and darken my greenery in select areas. And I opted for putting in the, uh, just the suggestion of some sand beneath the rocks. So they don't look like they just end there out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, like they're floating or something. And I got to do all of that without disturbing anything that I did on the front. So I did all of this adding extra green and adding the sand all on the backside of the drawing. 
I just love that ability. I encourage you to be adventurous when you doodle. If you make an underwater scene, maybe make a seahorse, an octopus, a mermaid, or a whole heck of a lot of fish, maybe. And tell me in the comments what you would paint. I love hearing from you. And definitely come show off whatever you make in my alcohol ink and doodle loving Facebook group. Oh my gosh. I, I had no idea how much doodling was going to be a thing in my group now. It's so much fun. Links for everything I used are in the description box. May the inks be kind. May your pens flow beautifully. So go let your creative nature shine and stay safe. See you soon. Bye now.